Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Ceramic Capacitors Turning a Deficiency into an Advantage. This presentation is based on two papers. Both of them have been presented and they are available at the record of the Applied Power Electronics Conference, APEC 2018, and can be downloaded from IEEE Explore. The resonant network is a precursor of resonant converters. The basic, say this is a series resonant network, is, includes a input voltage, inductor, resonant capacitor, and a resistor which serves here or represents a load. Energy can be transferred between the input and the output by changing the frequency. The frequency response between input and output is given here. Q is the quality factor depending on the characteristic impedance and the load, while the transfer function itself is a function of F over F0 when F is the switching or excitation frequency and F0 is the resonant frequency, which is of course a function of the uh, resonant inductor and resonant capacitor. As seen here, the transfer function is a function of this ratio. Now normally in the conventional converters, what is controlled is the frequency, the excitation frequency, and thereby the, this ratio is changed. Another way to go is to control the resonant frequency. That is to change either the resonant inductor or the resonant capacitor and thereby changing the transfer ratio between input and output. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss the possibility of changing this capacitor. Now the question is, of course, where can we get a capacitor that can be controlled? Well, as it turns out, the ferroelectric ceramic capacitor, the so-called class two and three capacitors, are highly voltage dependent. Now, in, usually this is considered as a deficiency because uh, as the bias of the capacitor is changing, the capacitance is changing dramatically. As we see here, these are two capacitors from two vendors. And as you can see in these two cases, the change in the capacitance is very large. It's actually by about 80%. That is the final value of the capacitance at the maximum operating voltage. These are permissible operating voltages. The final value is about 20% of the initial value. So there is a way to get a variable capacitor, which is voltage controlled. And this is the idea behind the papers that I have discussed and the presentation that I'm going to cover here. Let's consider a resonant LLC converter. We have here a half bridge configuration. We generate here a square wave, which is fed to the resonant circuit composing of the two inductor and a capacitor. Now by virtue of the fact that we have a fairly high Q here, the current is going to be sinusoidal. Now this current is, or part of it, is fed to the output via the transformer, there is a rectification, and we get eventually a DC output voltage. Now a way to analyze this circuit is to use the first harmonic approximation, in which we sort of assume that the excitation is sinusoidal, and this is justified by the fact that the current will be about sinusoidal. Now this part here, which is highly nonlinear, can be replaced by an equivalent RAC resistor, which is chosen such that it will dissipate exactly the same power as this part here. So from the point of view of the resonant circuit, uh, the damping is similar to what we have in the original circuit. So this is a equivalent circuit for the LLC converter. We have now an AC excitation or sinusoidal excitation and our AC is representing the load. The transfer function of this LLC converter or resonant LLC converter is very similar to what we've seen before. Of course the expression is a bit different but again the transfer function is a function of the ratio between the switching frequency in this case the square wave 
excitation frequency and the resonant frequency. And again, in the conventional way of control, we are controlling the frequency, the switching or excitation frequency, while the resonant frequency is of course kept constant. And this is a typical response. This is a normalized response to one hertz uh, frequency. And we see here the nice feature that uh, in this region, the converter is not that sensitive to the RAC or to the, the load resistance, while Q is of course a function of the load resistance representing different loads here. And therefore the span of frequency that we need in order to control this particular uh, resonant LLC converter is not very large. And this is one reason why this converter is popular. In the approach that I am presenting here, we're going to change the resonant circuit. And this can be done by replacing the resonant capacitor by a variable or voltage dependent capacitor uh, like C2, while we need another capacitor which could be either a voltage dependent or actually a fixed capacitor. Because we need this extra capacitor because we are going to bias this capacitor with a high output impedance driver. This is the driver, which is like a current source. And of course, uh, the DC here will have a DC path to the driver that is a short actually, if we are not going to have here a capacitor. So we do need here a capacitor, which again could be either a fixed or a variable capacitor. In our case, in our experiments we did, we've used these two capacitors to be a voltage dependent capacitor. Again, the controller is injecting here a charge to change the voltage, but it doesn't have to operate all the time, only when there is a need to change uh, the control. That is, if there is a change in the load or there is a change in the uh, input voltage. The transfer function of this converter now, which is capacitor called capacitance dependence is shown here and as a matter of fact it's very similar to what we have seen before and indeed if we compare the two transfer functions this is the frequency control unit this is the capacitance control unit they look pretty much the same now it's uh, not easy to really do a a simple comparison because the Q are defined here differently so therefore we just look at the shapes which are indeed the same uh, and we see here the same behavior in fact here we see a little bit a better behavior than in this case so the underlying conclusion is that indeed by changing the capacitance you change the resonant frequency and thereby you can control the transfer of energy between input and output in say a resonant LLC converter. Now to test this idea we have built this circuit which sort of mimics the actual LLC converter. This is like a network which has a resistor here to replace the transformer and rectifier etc. The bias of the capacitor was just changed by a voltage source in series with a large resistor so that there be no loading here that will short the AC so this is just the high impedance feed and by changing the voltage here you can change the bias and therefore you can change the resonant frequency and therefore you can change the transfer function between the input and the output. And here are the results. What we see here is a summary of uh, many experiments in which, let me go back, in which the input voltage was changed and the load was changed. And of course, to represent the situation of a converter, of a resonant LLC converter in which we maintain or we wish to maintain or the target is to maintain a constant output voltage, we change the bias until we reached the nominal value of the output voltage. So this graph here, or these plots, represent the situation in which we change the input voltage 
we change the load, these are different loads, and this is the amount of bias that you need in order to go back to the nominal value. For example, in the case of say 50 ohm, if the uh, input voltage is 20 volt, you need something like 80 volt bias. Uh, if uh, it is 33 and the voltage is say 25, you need 24, 20 volt bias. So we see that indeed we can cope with variation in both the input voltage and the load resistance by changing the bias of the capacitor. And we can see that by changing the bias voltage, we can actually control this LLC converter. So what are the advantages of capacitor control as compared to frequency control? Well, for one thing, we run the resonant converter at a fixed frequency. This has the advantage that the EMI now is concentrated at fixed frequencies, which are easy to filter out by digital filters. Now, this is very important in communication system, in radar, and some other system in which you don't want the interference to sort of move all over the spectrum. So here we have a constant frequency that we can easily handle. Another option is to run both frequency and capacitor control, that is to change both the capacitor and the frequency, and this will extend the operational envelope of the converter, that is, it will be able to cope with a wider input voltage range and wider load range. So there are some advantages uh, to the capacitor control method. Now how can we drive the capacitor and what kind of a driver can we use in order to change the capacitance uh, as we need for control. Now here is just a proposal. We have here two transistors. These are BJT transistor. The output is the, at the collector, so this is a high impedance. Uh, we have a window here, and a, of course the input comes here. There's a feedback that maintains the voltage. And the idea is that this window uh, ensures that current will flow only when you need to inject a charge to the capacitors. That is, when the voltage is around the value that you need or at the value that you need, uh, there's no current flowing in either of these two. And of course, this also prevents a shoot through through this transistor. That is, this arrangement uh, makes sure that either one or the other one or none of them will be conducting. And this is a more detailed um, schematics of the driver. Uh, we have here, this is uh, providing the uh, window. Uh, this is the level shifter, the two transistor, and the feedback. And of course, in order to stabilize the system, we have to need some phase compensation in order to make sure that the uh, total phase shift is uh, maintaining a stable system. There is, of course, another question, and that is the issue of losses. Now, each resonant converter has losses associated with the resonant capacitor because any capacitor, a fixed or a variable capacitor, will have a ESR, an equivalent series resistance. Well, the situation is not different in the ceramic capacitor, and what we see here is actually the temperature rise as a function of the current through the capacitor. These are the two capacitors that I mentioned earlier for the two vendors, and these curves are for different frequencies. The higher the frequency, the lower the temperature rise, that is, the lower the losses. And we see here that, uh, say, even for 3 amp, in this case, uh, for this particular capacitor, uh, the, in this frequency range, uh, we're talking about 15 uh, degrees centigrade increase, which is about the same thing here. So uh, this is something that can be handled, and of course one has to worry about the question of uh, not overheating the capacitor, not to mention the fact that this is of course uh, contributing to the total loss of the converter. So this actually brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I emphasize again that the, all the information is found in these two papers, which can be downloaded from the IEEE Explorer. Thank you very much.